Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So today's video, we're going to do a little follow-up on Saturday's video. Today is Tuesday, um, and I want to go over what you all saw in that video with the runout everybody was talking about and you were seeing in the video, and that is the Magic Chuck, and that is a quick change tool holder for the radial drill. Okay, so right here is the spindle of my drill. It's a four Morse taper, and I mean, I can grab onto it, it don't wiggle. But here is the magic chuck. And this thing is pretty cool in the fact that you've got these holders like this, and you can put them in and they lock in, just that simple. But there's some wobble there. And the cool thing about the magic chuck is this. You can start it up with it running, change the tool. Simple as that. Now the Magic Chuck is a really simple but quite an effective design for the radial drill. And what it uses is, if you can see down in there, there's a little ball on either side. And when you drop that collar or lift it up, the balls drop out of the way, you close it, they come back in. And the holders have this slot in them and they do have some give. Now, these aren't a precision tight, super tight fit because you can quick change them easy, but they also rotate back and forth in the, on them balls. Um, so when I was drilling that AR plate with that carbide drill, the wobble you were seeing, and possibly the punch through, it was chattering because the drill was, the holder was doing this in the, and I think that's what attributed to the failure of that carbide drill. Okay, for sake of argument here, I ran the spindle out to about where I was when I was drilling um, that AR plate. I got indicators set up here on the spindle. And we'll get that zeroed. And yeah, I got maybe a thou. I can wiggle it there. So there most definitely is a little bit of run out in my spindle, but I wouldn't consider that bad, especially for the age of this machine. Now let's set up with the chamfering tool I used in that video. And we'll go ahead and put the indicator out down towards the center of the chamfering tool here. What is that? Almost 20 thousandths just on this short little tool. Okay, so here's another tool I use. We saw 20 thousandths right there. This is holding the center drill and I use this because then I don't have to change the height of the machine to drill multiple things. So I can center drill and then run a regular taper drill, you know, cause they're longer. Um, so I don't have to change the height as often. Let's just find out what our run out is at the bottom of this guy. Because now it's got me really curious. Fifty thousandths without even trying it. So. You know, these magic chucks are great for a lot of things, but what I did in that video with the carbide drill, obviously that was not a good choice. I didn't realize it was this bad. Wow, that was rather disappointing how much slop there is in this. So I believe 100% that is what caused my failure in Saturday's video, is the slop, the run out, and the t possible twisting action that is allowed with these magic chucks. Um, overall, they're a great tool. Uh, absolutely indispensable here in the shop because of the speed of change. I mean, just that quick, you can swap out tools, even with the spindle running. Um, they're just amazing. This one was made by Collis, C-O-L-L-I-S. They are not a cheap tool um, for the hobbyist, but for a production standpoint, they are absolutely worth their weight in gold. Um, you can have a drill fixture up here um, with drill bushings and you know many different sizes of holes, and you can just pop, pop, pop holes all day long, just swapping drills 
saving yourself, you know, it's seconds, seconds to change out a drill versus, you know, 10, 20, 30 seconds to pop it out of this, the uh, um, Morse taper. So very indispensable for me here in the shop, um, but definitely something to look into further is the run out on, on other spindles and other tools here in the shop. Um, so that may be an upcoming video idea and something for you guys to check out as well. Well, I hope that explanation of, of how the magic chuck all works and what went wrong in Saturday's video all makes sense to you. Uh, definitely something to look into further on your equipment at home is the run out on stuff. And I'm gonna be checking more stuff here in the shop. You know, I have a lot older equipment, so checking this stuff out is a good thing. Um, one thou in the spindle though, just by hand, I don't consider that really bad. Um, it could be tighter, but it's definitely not bad. And as a teaser, here is an upcoming job. This is the seventh batch of these parts that I've done for this customer that is building robotic welders. This is part of a robotic welder setup. And so we've done six of these already. This is number seven, and this will be an upcoming video on the horizontal boring mill. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this video and the, the explanation of the magic chuck. If you have questions, please comment below with your questions. And until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.